Panasonic 100-400mm is currently the longest native telephoto lens you can buy for a micro four-third system. At 400mm it provides 800mm equivalent field of view when compared to 35mm format. So let's take a look how good this Panasonic is. Build quality is excellent. Entire lens is from metal and feels a serious piece of kit. It is also dust and splash proof. Lens mount is made from metal and has a rubber gasket around it for weather sealing. Weight is just a little bit under a kilogram. Mounted on a big body like GH5, it is well balanced and handles quite well. Here's a comparison with the new 12 to 60 mm lens so you can get a feeling how big or small it is. I find it quite compact for a lens that goes to 800 mm equivalent. Small metal lens hood is built in. Another one bigger and made from plastic is part of the package. It attaches on the metal hood with small screw. It can be reversed but then covers entire manual focus ring at 100 mm. Lens cap has pinchers in the middle of the cap, what means it can be removed when the lens hood is on the lens. Zoom ring disappointed me. It is sticky and hard to rotate at telephoto side between 250 and 400 mm markings. Basically, it ruined my whole experience with this lens. At $1800 it should rotate completely smooth. In fact, I cannot recall I have ever used zoom ring as bad as this one, no matter price point. In use, this makes impossible to rotate zoom precisely and in video makes footage shaky to the point I would call it unusable. Here's an example how much of this translates to video recording. I shot this handheld and it would be perfectly usable thanks to exceptional stabilization system, but zoom ring ruined it completely. I am not the only one reporting this issue. There are other people on internet having the same problem and Chris from the Camera Store TV YouTube channel had same issues when using this lens on his GX80 review. Whatever the problem, I hope Panasonic is aware of it and can find a solution. I don't know if all lenses on the market have this issue. Maybe it only affects the ones from the first batch or something like that. If you have this lens, please let me know in the comments how does your work. There is a locking switch between zoom and focus ring to prevent zoom creep. Focusing is internal. Front element does not rotate nor extend when focusing. The lens only extends when zooming. Manual focusing uses focus by wire technology, which means focus ring rotates infinitely. At least this one rotates as it should. Smooth with just enough resistance to avoid accidental rotation. Finally, tripod mount is part of the retail package. Actually, the lens can be rotated inside this entire part of the lens with controls and tripod mount. Really elegant solution. Here's a comparison how much this lens can zoom in real life situation. Let's start with 12mm just to give you idea of distances. This is at 25 and this is 60mm. And now 100-400mm to 400 lens at 100 all the way to 400mm. Even better, this is 100% crop from 20 megapixel GH5 image. I can clearly see faces and I checked later on Google Earth. This was shot from approximately 330 meters or 1080 feet distance. Impressive. Optical stabilization is built in and gives its maximum when used on the latest dual OIS bodies like GH5, GX8 and GX80 which can use both sensor and lens stabilization at the same time. My findings are it is possible to get sharp results down to approximately 1 20th of a second. Sometimes even more, sometimes less, depending how steady I held the camera. Without any stabilization, shutter speed of around 1 800th of a second would be required to get sharp photos at 400mm, so dual OIS gives on average around 5 stops and that is pretty awesome. Sharpness is nice at 100 and 200mm at center. Corners are a bit worse but still acceptable. At 300 and 400 mm things go slightly worse and especially in the corners but what these crops do not show is overall less contrast in images. In real life images are awesome as long as you resize them for PC monitor viewing or print on smaller or medium formats, up to A4 approximately. As soon as you start cropping them to 100%, lack of contrast and resolution at 300 and 400mm focal lengths can easily be seen. 
I find it acceptable within this price range, but if you plan getting this lens and pixel peep it, you will be disappointed. The only lens that does significantly better at this focal length is Olympus 300mm Prime. I should have it for review by the end of the week after I publish this review, so stay tuned as I have a feeling Olympus will be exceptional piece of glass. As for bokeh, I think it is rather good. When having enough distance between subject and background, background will be completely smooth. If not, branches can create a bit harsh looking backgrounds in some cases, but there are far worse lenses out there. I tested this lens for the centering and focus shift and couldn't find any signs of it. Focus breathing is not present. This is good lens for video recording. No matter how much I looked, I couldn't find lateral chromatic aberrations and that is not a surprise since they were corrected in GH5. Even better, longitudinal are also practically non-present and they are hard to remove in post-process, so my best guess is the lens doesn't suffer from them in the first place. Distortion is not present, but once again this is corrected in camera both for JPEG and RAW files. Light fall-off control in corners is solid. It can be noticed wide open and disappears slightly when stepping down a picture. It is spread gently across most of the frame and not only in corners, so to remove it completely a setting with a narrow midpoint must be used. I don't think it will be issues unless you shoot against a very uniform background, what can actually be the case for birding. Anyway, I had no problem removing light fall off and I find this performance acceptable. Flare is also well controlled. What you see right now is all that I got during my time with this camera. Except for sunsets or silhouette photos you will probably never point 400mm telephoto lens towards strong light sources, so in practical everyday photography flare will never appear, especially if lens hood is used. At minimum focusing distance of 1.3 meters, this lens produces 0.25 times magnification. It is not a real macro lens, but it can create some rather good close-ups. With 9 aperture blades, solid looking 18 pointed starbursts can be created. So for conclusion I can say I am reasonably satisfied by this lens. It has good build quality, weather sealing and comes with lens hood and tripod mount. Optically it does excellent in terms of distortion, flare control, chromatic aberrations and focusing speed on GH5. On Panasonic bodies which support dual optical stabilization it works perfectly, allowing sharp photos down to 1 20th of a second on 400mm and sometimes even more depending how good your camera holding technique is. Sharpness is rather good from 100 to 200mm but at higher zoom settings things are not that great. If you do not plan to crop heavily there's no reason to avoid this lens, but for critical quality I don't think this is the best choice. Finally, I don't know what the story behind the sticky zoom ring is. As I'm not the only one reporting this problem, I think you should try zooming the lens in camera store before buying it. It might be I got some early production sample on review and that Panasonic fixed this. But if not, this is one serious downside, especially on a lens this expensive. That's all for this review. If you have a question, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. Subscribe to my channel for updates and if you want to support my work, buy anything on Amazon using my affiliate links below the video. You will not pay any more than otherwise, but I will get a small percentage. Thanks for watching.